Good evening. I'd like to call to order the August 23rd, 2022 meeting of the City of West Palm Beach Historic Preservation Board. Can we please begin with a roll call? Amanda Skier. Here. Christine Kellogg. Let the record reflect that Christine Kellogg is not present. Dan Pinckney. Here. Gabriel Jaslowski. Here. Kenneth Breslauer. Let the record reflect that Kenneth Breslauer is not present. Reginald Stamba. Let the record reflect that Reginald Stamba is not present. Donna Tomaskowski. Let the record reflect that Donna Tomaskowski is not here. James Murphy. Present. Todd McLean. Here. Okay, thank you. We now move on to approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Do we have any changes? Okay, no changes from staff. Any changes from members of the board? Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion to approve? I move the board to approve tonight's agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Agenda is approved. We now move on to approval of the minutes from the July 26th meeting. Do you have any changes to the minutes as presented? Okay, can we please have a motion? I move the board to approve July 26, 2022 meeting minutes. Second. second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. We now move on to the report of the Historic Preservation Planner. Good evening, Frederick Mettner, City Historic Preservation Planner. Since the board last met, staff has reviewed 158 level one applications and 64 zoning reviews. And uh, the other just general communication that I wanted to share is to welcome our new board member, Todd McLean. Yes, welcome, Todd. <laughs> and um, as, a, <laughs> as an official welcome, you'll be voting this evening. Great, um, thank and, you. And uh, there may be one uh, item, though, that you're here for that we may lose a quorum for. So perhaps, um, I don't know if the applicant wants to wait to see if we have other board members joining us. We had anticipated them arriving. Um, the gentleman indicates it's 2501 South Flagler, okay. which is 22-17. So maybe we'll just wait till that case comes and perhaps uh, okay. move it towards the end of the agenda if possible, perhaps? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. We now move on to remarks by the chairperson. The matters before us are quasi-judicial in nature, which means we base our decisions on competent, substantial evidence that comes before us. We ask you to please keep that in mind when making your comments. For each case, the applicant will first present, then staff will make a presentation, and following that, we will open it up to public comment. After public comment, if the applicant wishes to do so, they may uh, make a rebuttal. And then after the rebuttal, we will go into executive session where we will make our decision. Uh, for each public comment, that will be limited to three minutes per person, please. Uh, also, for applicants, if you're making a presentation, please limit your presentation to 10 minutes. Uh, you are allowed 15 minutes if there's a demolition involved. To lead into this, we need to let you know if we've had any conversations outside of this meeting, and so we will now declare any ex parte communications. And I believe we have, we have a script now, right? Correct. So... Um, Mr. McLean, if you could begin, um, if you open your folder, yes, okay, perfect. All right, so this is my first time, so be patient. Do I list all the agenda items or just uh, general? Uh, you can uh, put them all uh, together and say except for the one item. Okay. Let me get my agenda here. So as to matter um, HPB 2217-2501, I have um, had ex parte communications. I have received written communications. I have conducted an investigation. I, I have made a site visit. I have uh, not received expert opinions. 
and I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. And Todd, could you then indicate for all the other cases as to all other matters and go through them again? Do you want me to list each? Uh, no, 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 just okay. to all other matters. As to all other matters, I have not had ex parte communications. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Uh, yes, as to all matters uh, appearing on tonight's August 23rd, 2022 agenda, I, James Murphy, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, and have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Amanda Skyer for case number 22-172501 South Flagler Drive. I did have communications with the, I had a meeting with the architect and the developer um, prior to the project ever coming before this board, but I just want to disclose that. Um, I can base my decisions on the evidence presented this evening. And as to all other matters on the agenda, I did speak with Ms. Mittner about all of them, but once again, I can uh, base my decisions on evidence presented this evening. Um, so I have not received written communications, I have not conducted investigation, I have not made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. As to matter of tonight's uh, agenda, I, Gabe Chanslavsky, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. As to the matter of all, ma all items on tonight's um, agenda, I, Daniel Pickney, have not had um, ex parte communications. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Okay, thank you. We now move on to the public comment portion of our meeting. Is there anyone here that would like to comment on an item that is not on the agenda this evening? Now is the time to do so. Would anyone like to speak on anything not listed on the published agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll now move on to the swearing in of our speakers. If you are planning to speak or think you may speak, please rise and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, we have three cases on the consent agenda this evening. Can we please have a motion to approve? I move the board to approve tonight's consent cases, case number 22-75, 22-76, and 22-77. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, if you are here for 3016 South Olive Avenue, 326 Kenilworth Boulevard or 529 34th Street, your case has been approved. Uh, our first continued case is 22-172501 South Flagler Drive, but I believe we need uh, another member of our board um, before. So if, if we could continue it towards the end of the agenda, sure. hopes that someone will... Okay, so we will come back to that case. 
uh, we'll start with case number 22-62, 320 Sunset Road. Sure, so you can use either microphone. Do you have a presentation? Okay, great. My name is Brian Brady, and I am the architect for the project at 320 Sunset Road. Also with me is the owner, Sam Blake, and our landscape architect, Andres Paradella. Um, this is a project in El Cid. It's in the 300 block, so it's closer to Dixie Highway. Um, there's an existing structure on the property. You can see a picture of it there. The existing structure is a uh, mid-century modern structure. It is four apartments right now. Um, we, when, we, when the owner bought this uh, property, we really tried to figure out a way to work with this building, um, but it just it did not work for us at all. It's a concrete block building. It's sitting in the ground right now. It has eight foot ceilings, and it just we couldn't turn it into a nice residential house. And so I'm a classical architect, so I was like, hmm, I think we're gonna have to start over. So we decided to go back to the drawing board and present something that we felt was harmonious in El Cid. So what we came up with, I'm sorry, I don't have this PowerPoint, but maybe if I do this. Is there someone that might be able to hold those for you so that you can speak in the microphone? Thank you. Raise <laughs> <laughs> No, if you just wanna. <laughs> yeah. So what we came up with here is um, sort of, we did not want to go Mediterranean in this block, so we designed something that was sort of in the uh, British colonial style. Um, Anne was really helpful in helping us shape this building. Um, if you'll see the main part of the building where the front door is, it's pretty much the same mass as the existing house that's there. Uh, it's the same dimension in the width, so we felt that that was sort of a true, um, a gesture to the street that we were on. We needed to have a garage in the front, and so we didn't want to have a garage in the front, so we pushed it back as far on the property as we could, um, creating a courtyard in there. Um, we also added a little guest house in the back with a pool. Um, uh, the materials, it's stucco, it's a wood shingled roof, um, working shutters, um, a mahogany door, and what else can I tell you? Great. Um, do you have any other boards that you would like to show? Or? Um, you want to talk about the landscape? Sure. And then I'm going to talk about the streetscape. <laughs> yes. Uh, Andre Paradello for the landscape architect for the project. So it's a little harder to see with the, the, the landscape plan that we developed is not in color. Um, <clears throat> but what we did was basically try to blend this property into the neighborhood while still creating a sense of privacy on all sides, really reinforcing native plants and trees and palms pretty much throughout the whole site. Uh, I think we really are enhancing the project, enhancing the, the building, and I think it's gonna be a great part of the neighborhood. I'm not sure if you have any questions about what we've designed there, but feel free to ask. Does anybody have any questions pertaining to the landscape? Any questions about the architecture? Yes. So this is, this is the uh, streetscape that's there. 
All the other houses on this block are either uh, ranches or capes, um, and I don't believe any of them are contributing. Um, ours is not contributing, that's why we're technically allowed to tear it down. And what we're proposing for the height of ours, we tried to keep it as low as possible, so we're uh, just about three feet under what's allowed. We're um, in 27.4, and we're allowed to be 30. And I would think that you know most of these other houses on the block, as this gets developed, you know, will be torn down and built up as well. Questions of the applicant. So there, there are two conditions of approval by staff, and one of the conditions is regarding the height of the house, and they are recommending um, that you reduce the height by at least 18 inches. Right. So are you willing to do that, or that well, is what that's you That's why I wanted to, to show the streetscape, because I really feel that, you know, if you go up and down El Cid, which I've done many times, it's high, low, <laughs> high, low, high, low. I mean, you, you see that and we're not even close to the, what's allowed, um, you know, we would like to keep it where it is because we like the roof line that we did, which has a sort of a stepped hip in there, and we would lose that if I lowered the roof by 18 inches. What about the second condition is um, that all the um, mullions in the window shall be external, clear glass in the front yes, we facade? Agree. And we agree with that, that's not okay. a problem at all. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing about the, the height? Yeah, sure. my only, uh, Can you please state your name sure. for the record? Samuel Blake. My, my only oh, in the microphone. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank my, you. Sorry about that. I'm not loud enough. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so my concern is creating a flat roof condition. So if we drop the ridge, then we have the potential for flat roof. So that's just my only uh, concern there. Would it be material looking from the ground up? Probably not, but my only concern is a flat roof. Have you explored reducing any of the ceiling heights instead of the pitch of the roof? Uh, we did explore that. You'll see in You'll see over the garage, we have a porch extended there. And if I, we did not want to reduce the height of the first floor. It's at 9.6, but on the second floor, if we reduce the height there, then my windows come down and that door would come down. And it's, you know, it's already a 6.8 door. So it sort of throws everything off there. What's the height of the second floor? The height of the second floor is 8.6. So 9.6 on the first floor and 8.6 on the second floor. What is the slope of the roof? The drawings don't, don't stay there. Yeah, slope it's about the 7 and 12. So could you drop it like to, you know, 4 and 12 or 5 and 12? Or? We could, but then I would lose that hip condition. It would just be, you know, a regular mansard roof. Any further questions of the applicant? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, very lovely design. Can you talk to us about the difference with the roof shape in the accessory structure versus the roof shape on the principal structure. Um, the Seems to shape be a, a little bit more dramatic uh, overhang right. and pitch on the uh, accessory structure. The roof shape on the accessory structure is a 5 and 12. It's much slower and it's just a straight mansard roof. But the eaves projection is also greater than on the principal structure. The, the the overhang. The, the roof structure? Overhang. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
Did you explore putting the driveway in the condition that the driveway is now? Your proposed driveway kind of uh, aligns with kind of a paver speed bump or in the roadway? Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that actually. Um, That's something we could investigate. I'm sure Andres would take a look at that. It just the, the the driveway back out does look a little challenging with the, how you have that kind of enclosed motor court that's off set from the driveway doors. I appreciate the effort to make the driveway door somewhat hidden, um, but I think you might find a little bit of a challenge. And then my only other comment on the design was it did you explore a front uh, a front entryway that's more pronounced maybe gives the owner some more coverage in inclement weather. We did have that on our original. Yeah. And um, the historic review board advised us not to do it. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll not move on to the staff presentation. Good evening, Ann Hamilton presenting case number 22-62 for demolition and new construction at 320 Sunset Road. Uh, the lot is in the El Cid Historic District uh, on the south side of Sunset Road uh, between Dixie Highway and Olive Avenue. Uh, currently there is a non-contributing mid-century uh, four-unit structure on the site. Um, this is a view of the uh, homes directly to the east and west. The request is to demolish the existing non-contributing two-story structure and construct a new two-story single-family home of approximately 4,328 square feet with a detached one-story accessory structure of approximately 288 square feet in a British colonial style. Uh, here's the site plan, the roof plan, the first floor plan, the second floor plan, the front elevation, the side elevations and the rear elevation and the cabana elevations. Uh, and here's a view of the streetscape and the renderings that the applicant provided. Uh, staff believes that the, uh, the existing structure, uh, since it is non-contributing, would re not represent an irreparable loss to the El Cid Historic District if it were to be demolished. And the new construction does meet Secretary's interior standards um, 9 and 10, and so we are recommending approval uh, with the conditions that the overall height of the building is reduced at least 18 inches and all windows will have external dimensional muttons and clear glass with low E possible on sides and rear only. Thank you. Questions of staff? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into public comment. Is there anyone here to speak on this case? Um, we did actually receive one public comment that I can uh, grade for you. Thank you. Uh, members of the Historic Preservation Board, good evening. We hope this letter finds each of you safe and well. As the property owners of 319 Belvedere Road, our team has reviewed the proposed demolition and construction of a new two-story structure, as well as an accessory structure at 320 Sunset Road. Please accept this letter as our formal support of this project. We believe the proposed structures are in keeping with the existing historic fabric of the block and neighborhood via its appropriate massing and composition. Thank you for your time in this matter and for continuing to protect our historic neighborhoods. Respectfully, TAC 3 LLC. Okay, any further public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into executive session. Uh, it just seems that if the board is concerned with the um, the uh, height of the building um, and the uh, applicant at this point doesn't seem to want to change that, we're left with two choices, either to deny it or to continue it and let them think about it a little while. Um, 
So well, that's I true. think we could also approve it with staff's conditions. That's true. But that would require that they would agree to it. No, we can still approve it. Okay. Yeah, I think that seven and 12 is steeper than usual. Could be easily changed. So I, I agree. I think that the project in general looks good and we could approve it with the staff conditions and then they can work with staff to make it lower or change the slope of the roof. Mm -hmm. I have to say, um, I did see um, the real estate listing for this property when you initially purchased it, and it did show that you were rehabilitating the current structure and building an addition, and I was very happy to see that, and so I was a little saddened to see that um, it was going to be demolished in this latest proposal. Um, I do think that this is an interesting block within the historic district. There's a lot of mid-century properties concentrated here. Um, and I think in particular, that's why it's important that um, we do as much as we can to bring down the height of the structure. So I am in favor of um, moving forward with staff's recommendation for the conditions. Is there anything, James, you would like to add as far as a condition with looking at the driveway entry and the uh, the speed bump, the existing speed bump that's there? Um, no, just something that uh, caught my attention when I, uh, when I saw it. No, I'm, I don't want to go ahead and design it for them and flip, flip the plan. I, I wonder if staff can comment on that. What happens when there's a proposed driveway that does align with one of those uh, traffic calmed instances? But um, so that would be that would be a situation where we would um, they would work with engineering the engineering department uh, to to address that. Okay, well, um, unless there's any further discussion or would someone like to make a motion? I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 22-62 for demolition in accordance with the demolition guidelines as set forth in the Historic Preservation Ordinance, section 94-49 of the City Zoning and Land Development Regulations. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Oh, sorry, we need one more motion. <laughs> it's a two-parter, one for I, the demolition and then one for the new construction. I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 22-62-320 Sunset Road for new construction in accordance with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, specifically Standards 9 and 10, as well the additional compatibility criteria set forth in the Historic Preservation Ordinance, Section 94-49 of the City Zoning and Land Development Regulations. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report which constitute competent substantial evidence. In addition, the approval of this request is made conditional upon the following restrictions, stipulations, and safeguards that I move are necessary to ensure compliance with the purpose and intent of the Historic Preservation Ordinance and the Historic Preservation Element of the Comprehensive Plan of the City of West Palm Beach, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, specifically Standards 9 and 10. The conditions include the following. First, the overall height of the building shall be reduced by at least 18 inches. Second, all windows shall have external dimensional mountains and clear glass. Low E coating is permissible on sites and rear only. 
Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Our next case is case number 22-68, 230 Argyle Road. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Baruch. I'm the architect for 230 Argyle, Argyle Road. Um, we received a few comments last in the last meeting that have been addressed. I'll just go over the comments. Um, the most important one was the scale of the great room, which has been reduced. Also, there was a comment regarding arched windows that had been eliminated in the south facade, which we reintroduced and then repeated them at the great room on the uh, north elevation as well. Uh, next comment, the roof over the port cocher and bedroom above has been lowered one foot per suggestion. And a six inch reveal has been added on the south uh, elevation where the east part of the addition meets the existing facade. Um, we feel that these comments and their incorporation have improved the project. I hope everybody agrees. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions of the applicant? I, th I think uh, that you are right and thank you so much for working with us and it's looking much nicer. Oh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my theory is that, you know, comments help to improve the design. You know, it's more of a process of evolution, so I appreciate the comments. I, I absolutely agree, and I'm glad you made that comment because it is undoubtedly a superior project than when it was originally presented to us. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Frederick Mettner presenting case 22-68 for additions and alterations at 230 Argyle Road, a contributing property in the Prospect Park slash Southland Park Historic District. As you can see from the aerial, it is a large corner property uh, at the southeast corner of Argyle and South Olive Avenue. Here are some pictures. Um, the structures are very, uh, are, not, are obscured from view through hedges, but once you step inside, you can see the typical Mediterranean Revival style. <laughs> Um, of the main structure and the very large existing accessory structure. The uh, modifications from, uh, that are proposed are in addition to the east, in addition to the west, and a trellis connection between the two. This is the proposed uh, first floor plan, and as the architect indicated, this new great room, and then this uh, is added and has been lowered. You'll see in the elevations in a minute. There is a jog here in the family room to the breakfast room where it meets the original house. And then the portico share is the other addition. Second floor, you do now have some steps down into the master bedroom. And this is the existing versus the proposed. So existing and proposed with the great room down here and the addition further back and the portico share that is lower than the main roof line. This is the north primary facade, the south or rear facade existing and proposed with again the addition here and over here in the connection piece. West existing and proposed, um, 
This is where the Porta Cachira is, and then again, the connection and the east elevations of this part of the great room and the rear addition. And we do believe the compatibility criteria have been met, as well as Secretary of Interior Standards number nine and 10, and we are recommending approval and concur with uh, the applicant and uh, that the board's recommendation last time helped improve this project greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Okay, thank you. Do you have any public comment on this case? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into executive session. Well, it sounds like you all uh, fared well while I wasn't here last month. <laughs> it's always great to hear an applicant that is um, receptive and appreciative of our comments, so thank you for that. Um, and with that, I think it's pretty straightforward. Would someone like to make a motion? Yeah. I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 2268 for alterations, additions, ad valorem, a tax exemption in accordance with um, standards that set forth in the Historic Preservation Ordinance, ordinance number um, um, 3554-02. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the applica application submitted and the staff report, which constitutes competent substantial evidence. Do the second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, your case is approved, thank you. Our next case is case number 22-74, 326 Edgewood Drive. Madam Chair and board members, uh, good evening. My name is George Gentile. I'm president of 2GHO, Landscape Architects, Planners, Environmental Consultants, and we're here tonight representing uh, 326 Edwards Drive. Um, they're here for tonight a special use permit and a waiver to the lot size for this project. Um, uh, this uh, aerial that you see here, I just wanted to make note that the project, the property <coughs> is located uh, just east of um, South Dixie Highway, which is a commercial area that uh, our owners who are here tonight uh, frequent that area and use the shops and the other things in that area, which makes it a good area for, um, for this uh, uh, use. So the class use uh, B special permit, uh, we're asking for a waiver to, do, to uh, deviation requests from section 94303B2 of the zoning and land development regulations pertaining to lot width. This property was subdivided uh, back in the 20s um, and, the, and the house was built in, the, in the 1933. And um, uh, the lots in this subdivision were at 25 foot wide and the house was put on a two lots, which made it 50 feet wide. And there's a, a number of other lots in this area that are the same size. Um, again, it's located in Prospect Southland Park. Uh, as I said, in 1933, the house was built. Uh, the property was really platted in around 1923. And uh, this is one of the combined lots of two 25 foot lots. They were all 25 foot at the time, so. Here's some views of the property itself. The structure in the rear is the where they will be, they're asking for the special use permit to use it um, uh, as a, um, a, a apartment and um, uh, doing just interior renovations to that property. The property is remaining in its uh, configuration as it is. Um, as stated by your staff in your staff report, we meet all the uh, land development regulations, all of your uh, special use standards, um, and also the uh, residential district standards. Um, it, I'm going to, uh, just for brevity, just uh, I'll let you know that this, those standards and the complies are in your staff report. I won't go over each one of them unless uh, the commission uh, decides they'd like me to. 
Um, the waiver allows the owners to make a functional use of their property. The staff uh, has recommended approval of the waiver based on meeting the standards as I indicated and the applicant agrees to all the conditions of approval and will comply with those. At that, uh, Madam Chair, I will uh, stop and let the staff go ahead and I'll be glad to answer any questions or do any rebuttal if there's a time necessary. Great, thank you. Yes. Do you have any questions of the applicant at this time? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anne Hamilton presenting case number 2274 for a Class B special use permit for 326 Edgewood Drive. Um, the existing residence is in the Prospect Southland Park neighborhood, uh, as the applicant stated, very close to Dixie Highway on Edgewood. Uh, the request is for a Class B special use permit with a waiver request from Section 94-303B2 of the Zoning and Land Development Regulations to allow the existing accessory structure to be utilized as an accessory apartment on a 50-foot wide lot where a 60-foot lot width is required. Uh, this is an image of the existing home. Um, the accessory structure is in the back um, towards the rear of the lot. It was previously a garage um, and was converted into an accessory apartment uh, by the owners um, and they require the uh, the waiver to uh, not meet the 50, the 60 foot lot width standard. Uh, previously, the board saw this case back in December for alterations to windows on, on the accessory structure under case 21-104, as seen here. Um, here is a uh, floor plan of the proposal to put a kitchen in the back building. And staff is recommending approval of the case with the requested waiver based on the findings that it meets the standards in the zoning and land development re regulations as listed here, with the conditions that three off-street parking spaces will be provided and a license is required for any commercial use of the additional unit. Thank you. Questions of staff? I have a couple questions. So. Um, this is an existing structure that needs a special waiver to be used as a kitchen? Yes, so as it was built, uh, it was a garage um, and work was done to um, convert the garage into a kitchen without permits previously. Um, so the kitchen is existing, but um, because they don't meet the standards for an additional unit on site, which is triggered by um, usually a, a cooking facility, um, that's why they require the um, Class B. So is this going to be a kitchen or is it going to be an apartment? Um, I believe as it's built, it's just a kitchen. Um, we, we use the, uh, the, termini, the terminology uh, accessory apartment to differentiate from it being an accessory structure, um, which doesn't have the, um, the cooking facility element. Okay, so just to, so I'm clear, there's no, it's not going to be a commercial kitchen? Because I've seen some um, correspondence with some questions as to the use of this existing building for um, its future use. So that's why I'm trying to get some clarification. Yes, yeah, so that was, um, I believe there was a, a letter um, yeah. to the board included in your packet um, from a from a neighbor where um, we haven't had any discussions with the applicant on how the, uh, the structure might be being used. Um, so I can't speak to that. Okay. All right, thank you. Is there a plan to show the additional parking spots in the front um, being requested? That hasn't been provided yet. Um, I believe. There's a, uh, a carport, porta cachere where they are parking now, and there's ample space for three cars to be parked in that area to the uh, end of the driveway. Okay. It will not be on the public right of way. Uh, they do that now, so. Thank you. Okay. 
So when we normally approve um, a case like this, it's for a residential apartment, mm -hmm. not for this type of use, correct? Correct. Um, typically, you know, we, we would see something like this as a full apartment with, uh, you know, living quarters um, rather than just a, a kitchen. Uh, well, I just, and could you explain, um, I, I guess for, for those on the board that may not be familiar and anyone in the audience, um, so is it that most accessory structures are not zoned to have kit cooking facilities? How does that work? Um, so they, it, I guess it depends on the accessory structure. Um, it, you know, the question here is the, is the lot width um, because you need a 60 foot lot width to have an accessory um, kitchen in, in a, a, and essentially it, it's another unit. Um, so to have two units on site, uh, they would need to have a 60 foot lot width and be 60,000 square feet. Uh, and um, they don't meet the lot width requirement, they do meet the lot size requirement. Um, so another, you know, another lot that had an accessory garage um, and wanted to convert it into a, a second unit would be allowed to do that if they met um, both those standards for um, the lot requirements. Okay. So this is a waiver f to allow a second residential unit on the site deficient in lot width. Yes. There's two meters. Hence Essentially, yeah. It would, uh, two meters would also trigger this um, or, a, or a second kitchen. And do you have, uh, knowing that there's this swath of Southland Park that has historically been platted with 25 foot parcels, um, do you or does the applicant have other approvals through the city of similar waivers for this uh, use? Um, I do. I do believe we have granted waivers for this in the past. Mm -hmm. we, we have on a case by case basis, but um, there's not that blanket ability at this point, uh, just so that we can assure that the density and um, intensity is still maintained uh, based on our comp plan, and that again parking is provided and all the other mitigating factors are addressed. That's where I was going. So there's no saturation, density concern, or. Um, the change of the neighborhood so that it would begin to elicit a multifamily. Correct. Okay. And so uh, you actually could not ask for a class B if the lot size was less than 6,000 square feet. They meet that portion of the criteria. It's the width. And we have the ability to present a class B to you for the 50 foot lot instead of a 60 foot lot as long as the overall size is there because of exactly what it was stated before is that the platting was typically in 25 foot increments. Thank you. So this kitchen facility is already built, right? Yes. And I remember when we received the first time this case um, was to approve something that had already been built at that time, right? Yes, which is, which is also the case here. Thank you. The neighboring property to the um, to the east looks like it's kind of a mirror configuration. Um, does that have a similar accessory dwelling unit in the rear? Um, I'm not sure. You're not uh, sure. To be honest. Okay. Any further questions of staff or the applicant? Okay, thank you. I believe we have some public comment on this. Um, Catherine Deems. Reams, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, ma'am, would you please come up to the microphone? If you could please state your name for the record, and then if you would like to make any comments pertaining to this case. Catherine Weems, 321 Edgewood. I approve anything that they've done. Good okay. neighbors. Okay, thank okay. you. 
Toby Smith. Toby Smith, 325 Edgewood Drive, uh, directly opposite them as well. Um, no objections, you can't see anything. Great neighbours. That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further public comment? Okay. Would you like to offer a response? <laughs> Just maybe a clarification. Um, sure. Our owners know the people next door, and they do have a kitchen in that uh, unit that's in the back, the okay. other structure. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. So with that, we will go into executive session. I just have some questions, because this case is a little confusing. Um, because I haven't been here for any of the previous presentations. There's an existing structure that we're approving f to have its own address and to be change the zoning from a single family to a multifamily. No. no? Okay. Uh, the kitchen is really throwing me off here, yes. to be honest, because it's a, it sounds like a commercial <laughs> kitchen, and well, I wouldn't want a commercial kitchen next door to me sure. in any capacity. I don't care yes. how nice the neighbors are. <laughs> so, and, you know, and this just kind of seems to be that that's where the direction this is going because no one's really discussing the, the use of this. Um, and, and I would I, certainly defer that uh, those questions to the applicant so they can share with you exactly how this is going to be utilized. From a zoning standpoint, it is an SF14 zoning district, so the 14 units per acre would allow a second unit, right. or, which is, again, for our standards, defined by a kitchen, which that's what they have. Yes, minus bedrooms and other things we typically see associated with the unit, and so that's what this requires. But um, that the other questions... Uh, should be directed to the applicant. Okay. Thank you. Sir, would you like to, to speak to how this unit will be used? It, first of all, it is not a commercial kitchen, okay? <laughs> um, uh, it'll, it'll be used uh, as an extension of the house, that kitchen itself, uh, uh, and has the ability to have the additional uh, unit there based on the special use permit request. Okay, so it meets, and, and I also want to make sure that you understand it meets the comprehensive plan, which I think is very important. It meets all the provisions of your comp plan as well. So, and it, but it, I want to make sure you understand it's on the record. It is not a commercial kitchen. Okay. So it's an, an extra kitchen. So the, the main structure has a kitchen and this structure has a, you know, a family kitchen. Yeah, I, that's a kind of a question, question I have now. To, if, if this is an extension of the house, why does it need to be its own address? Why can't they just use it the way that it... It's, I don't think that it's going to be its own address. I, you you only can put two kitchens or two cooking facilities in a lot, only if the lot is 60 feet wide, but this is 50. So that is all what they are requesting. Okay. Um, are we in executive session? But, uh, it, but it could be a rentable unit for uh, a college kid that just needs 400 square feet or your mother-in-law that moves. I mean, they can live independently. Thank Madam, you. Madam Chair, the owner is here, would be glad to explain anything that you need as well in regards to the use. Okay. Okay. Do we want to hear from the owner? I, I don't think we need to. Thank you, though. I guess I'm just still curious. Is this um, perhaps a, a religious issue where they need two kitchens? I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I think this 
I, this project is a challenge just because there was so much work done without it coming to, before the board. So now to have them back. So those all, all of those windows were put in um, previously without going through the process. And, and here, I think this is another example of um, asking for permission after something's been completed. And so I think that's like the main issue here is that um, there hasn't been much transparency. But I mean, in terms of the facts of the case and, and meeting all of the standards, um, you know, with exception of the lot width. I don't know if that's sub sufficient grounds to deny it. I don't know, maybe you all feel differently. No, I, I, I agree with, with you in terms of what you said, in terms of, um, you know, the staff review said that otherwise, um, you know, checks off all the boxes, so that should be sufficient. James, were you going to say something? I was just going to say the, the, the code clearly allows an avenue for approval through the waiver process, not a variance process. Um, the standards are met. It is compliant with zoning in that regard and is consistent with the comprehensive plan for density. Um, staff has found no uh, potential adverse impacts of the approval, with, albeit with providing the additional parking. Um, I'm inclined to support the application, but I am not privileged to the prior um, occurrences that the project had before this commission. Any further discussion, or would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I move that the Historic Preservation Board uh, grant application number 22-74, um, a request by Ismael Nur, um, Nuno and Molly Green for a Class B special use permit to allow an accessory apartment use on a lot that is 50 feet wide at 326 Edgewood Drive. The motion is based upon the testimony presented along with the application submitted and staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. The board hereby <clears throat> makes findings of fact that each of the criteria in Article 2, Section 94-36E3 um, and 4 and 5 have been met. In addition, the granting of the Class B special use permit is made conditional upon the restrictions, stipulations, or safeguards as follows. Uh, three off street parking spaces will be provided, and uh, a note that a license is required for any commercial use of the additional unit. To the second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed. Okay. Would you like to state your reasoning for the record? Yeah, I, I, I think that requesting. 10 feet, which is 20% of the required width, is too much, in my opinion. Um, I think we had four. You were a yay or a nay? I was a nay. Okay, could you state your... Yeah, I don't think we have the full picture here. And um, just from the past experience with this project that I'm aware of, I don't think we have the full picture. So I can't approve that today. Okay. So we have um, three yeas and two nays, so the, the motion carries and your case is approved. Thank you. Yes, one, two, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, Madam Chair, could did I Did I count correctly? Uh, yes. <laughs> could, okay. we could we just ask, ask the applicant and, and the Oh, sorry. Could you wait one moment, please? To, to wait. Um, I do need to research. I just want to make sure of um, the vote count on, a, on this particular type of Oh, vote. if that's sufficient? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if you would give me a moment. Sure. Should we move on to the next case and then we'll come back?
Um, can we just take a break for two minutes? Sure. Would that be okay, okay, we're going to take a quick break. Sorry, we just have to make sure that's sufficient majority to pass the, the case. Thank you.
your patience, our, um, our attorney Ar Arlene is going to explain. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I, I do appreciate everybody's patience. I apologize. We did have to do a little bit of research um, under uh, looking at this type of an issue under zoning board would require a supermajority, which we don't necessarily have today here. Um, with this vote, um, however, upon review of everything in relation to the codes regarding this board, its powers, uh, voting under this board, and our bylaws for this board, um, that is not the same um, voting standard for this board for this issue. So under the existing codes, the existing bylaws, the existing standards for this for this board, um, motion carries. Okay. Thank you. So your, your project is approved. Okay. Um, our next case is 22-56, 309 Edgewood Drive. I've been on this board a very long time and that has never happened. <laughs> We've never had to break for <laughs> Legal research. <laughs> I apologize. And thank no, you for your I, thank you it for was, your diligence. It's uh, it's you know sorting through all the various different codes, and they're pretty um, they're pretty intense. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, is the uh, applicant for three zero nine Edgewood Drive present? Okay, should we move it to the end of the agenda to give them the opportunity? Okay. Um, the applicant is not present and um, would staff like to make a presentation? Good evening, Ann Hamilton presenting case number 22-56 for alterations at 309 Edgewood Drive. Uh, this home is located on the north side of Edgewood Drive uh, between Dixie and Olive. Um, here's a picture of the site. Um, the request is to enclose the front porch um, on the front of the home where it's ex an existing screen enclosure with windows. Um, here's a view of the demo plan that was submitted as part of the permitting process. Um, here are the elevations that were provided. Um, the, the proposal is to enclose it with single hung windows uh, and a side view. And staff was recently made aware that uh, the work has already been performed at the residence uh, and the porch has been enclosed with windows already. Um, staff is of the belief that uh, this proposal does not meet the applicable codes and is therefore recommending denial of the proposed porch enclosure. Thank you. Questions of staff? Uh, yes. And were those um, screen openings differently sized than the proposed drawings of the single family home openings? Looks like they're larger or at least longer and involve demolition of part of the knee wall. Um, so yeah, in, in the original proposal, it, it did appear that way. Um, as to, to what has actually been installed on site, it doesn't even appear to match um, the conditions that were proposed in the original uh, elevations. But I, I believe the, the actual height um, was retained in what was installed. Uh, they did enclose the two smaller uh, sections of the porch uh, close to where the street number is also. Can you please um Explain your efforts to make contact with the property owner. Um, yeah, so this is, um, I believe the, the permitting process started um, a while ago. Uh, we explained to the to the owner and the, uh, the applicant, which I believe is the contractor um, for the project, uh, that they would need to go before the board um, for a porch enclosure of this type. Um, 
They, they did eventually submit an application. Um, once the application was submitted, uh, you know, we, we did have a discussion of them appearing last month before the board. Uh, they, they indicated that they would be attending, um, as those of you that were at the meeting um, are aware, they, they did not attend the last meeting. Uh, after that, I reached out to the applicant, um, again, to see if they would uh, be attending this meeting um, and didn't receive a response. Um, and staff is of the belief that, uh, you know, enough attempts had been made to um, ensure that the applicant would arrive at the meeting. Uh, you know, uh, certainly we, we called and emailed them a number of times. They, they were aware of the meeting date and they indicated that they were aware of the meeting date. Okay, thank you. So, so are, are the windows already installed? Yes, uh, this picture uh, was taken yesterday or on Friday um, of the installed windows. And do you know if this porch is original? Uh, it's not. No. Uh, it, it is a later addition um, to the home. It's not a particularly um, architecturally appropriate um, front porch for the home. Um, but our opinion was still that it would still be more appropriate as a screened porch rather than a enclosed space with windows. It would be, okay. Madam Chairwoman, may I actually inquire for a yes. moment? Ms. Hamilton, can you confirm that at last month's hearing and this hearing, this particular property and applicant, there was proper notice for the, the hearing? For I can their, confirm, For yeah. their property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Okay, any further questions of staff? Okay, thank you. Do we have any public comment on this case? Okay, seeing none, we'll go into executive session. No, I, I am inclined to deny it because it's coming, you know, denial from staff, so I don't have any basis to approve it. I agree. Would someone like to make a motion? I move that the Historic Preservation Board deny application number 22-56 on 309 Edgewood Drive for alterations. The motion is based upon the testimony presented along with the staff report that competent substantial evidence of record has not been submitted that satisfies the standards set forth in the Historic Preservation Ordinance, section 94-49 of the City Zoning and Land Development Regulations, the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, the additional compatibility criteria set forth in the Historic Preservation Ordinance. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, the case is denied. Our next case is 22-78 cases are 22-78 and 22-79, 1409 Georgia Avenue. Uh, and Madam Chair, before we continue on to new business, I did want to mention that it appears that other board members will not be joining us this evening, so therefore we will not have a quorum. So if the applicant um, doesn't want to stay for the whole meeting, perhaps that gets continued till next month. Just a suggestion. Yes. Thank you, and apologies. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Polly Daughtry. I'm the architect at 1409 Georgia Avenue. I'm here tonight with uh, Jonathan Burgess. Um, he's, uh, his wife, Lindsay, isn't here this evening. They're um, very excited about this project because they have a growing family and this is a really a necessary addition to the um, existing residents. So there's two cases here. There's the 2278 case, which is a variance request, and there's the 
2279, which is an ad valorem request for an addition. And so this, uh, this page is mainly a summary of what we're um, requesting. So everything that is in blue, which is the extent of this project, is um, per the staff report is um, uh, recommended for approval. Um, if you go to the uh, top right corner, that's the uh, just an overall site plan. Um, to orient you, north is Plan North. To the right is Georgia Avenue. And then the property is surrounded by existing historic residential properties. Uh, we are requesting to remove the uh, rear deck. Um, there is a primary structure and a guest house at the rear. They are both single story residences. And then as we go down to the um, plan below is the proposed plan. We're um, asking to um, align the addition, which is where our variance comes into play, um, align the new addition at the ground level and the second level with the existing residents attach a 50 foot square foot trellis at the front. Um, the addition is 188 square feet enclosed at the ground level, 107 square feet for the porch at the ground level, and 881 square feet at the second floor. All of these uh, values meet the FAR requirements and the like lot coverage. And then finally, our, um, we are requesting to add an attached trellis at the rear of the property of the main residence. So just in general about the Grandview Heights Historic District, um, you can see at the very top right corner, both of these, the primary and the secondary structure are co contributing historic. Uh, the houses in this neighborhood were built in 1910 and 1925 for middle to working class uh, families. Um, it was very desirable in this location because it was in close proximity to the, the turning basin and the city terminals. And that's kind of where the Howard Park is right now. Um, this was added to the historic registry in 1999 with 73% 73 conform contributing. There's a lot of historical styles here like American Foursquare, Mission, and then there's a variety in, in sizes. So small to large sizes, one to two stories. So the, the images below, the first two images are, um, they were referenced in the National Registry. Um, these are more current photographs. And um, so the masonry vernacular at 725 New York Avenue is, um, has those rafter tails. The porch is um, slightly smaller than the main structure, so you get these varying heights in the roof and roof lines. Um, there's a textured stucco. The Craftsman Bungalow, which is the center one at 1607 Georgia, um, you'll see these like the gable ends, you'll see a dormer, um, but again, the stucco and the rafter tails. So this, this structure is considered masonry vernacular with bungalow influences, per the staff report. Um, it was the Otto and Almond Whittle House, built by Cornelius Meerdink in 1924, and it has a lot of these um, attributes. So the big thing on this project is, um, and why the client is very excited, is that he already has a lot of things, solar panels, a vegetable garden, vehicle charging, and um, this is meant to be a, um, like an exp exhibition, not only for him, but for our firm to showcase how we can um, cohes like harmonize between the historic requirements, but also embed um, sustainable attributes like light colored roofing or uh, energy and water efficient systems. And so this is something that us as a firm are trying to, but we also want to be able to do this on historic res residences. So this doesn't necessarily affect the aesthetic of the house, but it affects how it works within. So these are existing uh, photos. So from the front to the rear to the guest house at below. This is the um, site plan, the existing site plan. And so what we are requesting in the variance is there, the horizontal line, the dash line, is the five foot setback. We are requesting a 1.8 foot variance, which would bring it to a 3.2 foot setback at the north um, side of the property. And that would align the addition, both the first level and the second level with the existing residents. And then some other things on this, um, the, other, the other reason for the variance is the existing lot width is 45 feet, which is less than your typical lot width in this district at 50 feet. Um, the other things on this plan is we have um, uh, removal of the existing deck, removal of non-historic windows and doors at the rear. 
This is the proposed ground floor. So we are looking at adding a 107 square foot porch, which is at the bottom left corner, a um, 188 square foot enclosed addition at the top left, which is combined with this for 188. And um, again, the request is to align. This is the second floor addition. So this would be at 881 square foot addition, a trellis at the front and a trellis here. This is the roof plan. So removal of a portion of the existing standing seam roof and addition of a um, roof to cover the addition. So one of the modifications we have made since we put in the application um, is the top two elevations here are what were in your packet. So the gable end has these vertical members, it has the windows. We are proposing, since a further design review, um, more simplified gable end. As you can see here, the windows are a little bit larger, um, and then it's a little bit more simple, simplified. All right, so the elevations. So starting up here, um, we're showing a removal of a portion of the roof, removal of the stoop and uh, door. We're adding a second floor. We're adding a little bit for a closet. We're adding a trellis. We're aligning. Instead of aligning it back and setting it back, in elevation it feels a little more balanced if we were to align the whole thing. And then um, 881 square foot addition at the top. And then um, part, um, we're, we're showing a removal of the deck in the rear. And then part of our um, proposed modifications are to take the existing window. So you'll see here there's like a single hung window. We're adding muttons to kind of match the architectural style of the six over one. This is side elevation. This is the south. And so here you can see the deck being removed, the roof being removed, second story addition, um, a little bit of a porch here, and then this closet um, building out that. This is the north elevation. Again, the roof, the deck, second floor. Uh, this is the interior um, addition at the ground level at 188 square feet, and then a trellis. And then there's a trellis here as well. So for the uh, variance, um, there's a few reasons why we're requesting this. Um, we have the, this is the five foot setback, in this dashed line. We're requesting that this be the first and second floor addition this be the uh, second floor addition, and that we bring those to align with the edge. So you can see here it's a 3.2 setback. It's 2.2 at the fireplace. Um, and the reason is, one, the cohesiveness at the front elevation, which you saw. Uh, two, the lot size is more narrow than typical at 45 feet. And then structurally offsetting the addition would increase, the one, the overall co cost, but also may incur damage to the interior. So there's things like Miami-Dade pine, and things that we want to um, make sure we can preserve in this. Um, so that might de be detrimental to that. And then in general, though, if we do keep this at a 3.2 uh, setback, we are at 13.3 on this side, which brings it to a 16.5 overall setback, which is greater than the 15 foot required. This, um, this plan is from the structural engineer. He did a, a report that should have been in your packet. So you can see there, the intent is to drop columns down in, in the existing wall or the new wall um, and try to make it a simple um, modification. This is the proposed. And then just in terms of um, other projects around that have done this, um, you can see the one at 736 New York Street has done an addition and they set it back just as we are trying to do it as well. And that's the end. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Thank you for the thorough presentation. Do you have any questions of the applicant? Uh, yes, I do. Hi, Polly. Um, I, I really appreciate the graphics in your presentation going um, very, very um, visually compelling and illustrative of your points. Very good. Did you get any historic photographs of the existing house? I'm it's it's currently stucco or are you removing the wood siding it's cur it's currently stucco and um 
I. I'm wondering if it was yeah. wood siding. Usually, yeah. Usually we ask, and uh, the only thing we have is from um, when the client bought the bought the residence, and it had it had the stucco on it. So it's I mean it's a masonry vernacular type of house. So, and we're maintaining it. We're the intent is to maintain the texture and whatnot. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Frederick Mentner presenting cases 22-78 and 2279 for 1409 Georgia Avenue. Um, we we're presenting them together because if you don't get the variance, then the ad valorem uh, addition um, is a moot point. So it's a side setback variance and the ad valorem pre-construction application for a second, primarily a second floor addition. Here you see the aerial. Uh, the applicant already has solar panels on the south side. Um, and the request is to construct the second floor addition, which would typically require five foot side setback, but they are proposing 3.2 feet instead, requiring a 1.8 foot variance. So as you stated, the applicant did a very thorough job with their presentation, so I will move quickly through uh, the request. Uh, here's the uh, current conditions of the house, the site plan, uh, and it would be this north property line here, you can see the 3.2 feet. Well, there's a much more generous south setback of 13.3 feet, so the cumulative setback um, is met. It's just that north uh, to be in alignment. So the existing and the proposed, and as you saw, there is a slight modification from what was initially presented to staff and the board in its uh, detailing, and we are supportive of what was uh, just presented to you. So the proposed site plan is some modifications back at the rear, the west side of the property, and then the creation of a second floor that currently does not exist. So uh, again, existing with proposed, again, having simplified this uh, detail under the eaves. There's actually a lot of bungalow or style structures in Grandview Heights that have a stucco finish, and the texture would be consistent. I do believe by doing a second floor, I think that second floor differentiates it enough, even though the other materials are the same. Um, so rear addition is probably where it's most prominent, because that's where it's focused, as you can see from the side, existing and proposed. And it does have that kind of stepped approach to it, and then the existing accessory structure. So we are recommending approval of the variance request, uh, which is case 22-78, uh, because it is not the doing of the applicant. The home is already in that uh, location. We believe it makes sense to align it, and so we do believe it complies with all these standards, which have been also outlined in your packets, which are uh, the Zoning and Land Development Regulation Sections 9438-D6. We also believe the addition is compatible with the uh, criteria in our code, as well as Secretary of Interior Standards 9 and 10, and we're recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you. Questions of staff? Okay. Do we have any members of the public that wish to speak on this project? I apologize. There was a letter of support in your packet. Um, from uh, Joe Rosowski, and then we did receive one additional one, and it states, uh, greetings, we own several properties at 410 Georgia Avenue and on P Street in West Palm Beach. We support the requests of the applicants. It is very important to keep people like John and Lindsay in our neighborhood. With kindest regards, Cheryl and Kirk Grantham. Okay, great. So we'll go into executive session. So I think it's a well-designed addition, and I appreciate how far set back it is. Yeah, no problems with it. And typically for um, additions, we do allow them to extend to the, um, the side yard setback. 
historic that was historically there. So I don't think they're asking for anything more than we've approved with other projects. No, I think it's a great project. Nice addition to Grandview Heights. Very familiar with that neighborhood. And um, I think it'll be really nice house when finished. Congrats. Well, unless there's any further discussion, um, we need two separate motions, one to grant the variance and one for approval of the ad valorem application. I move that the Historic Preservation Board grant application number 22-78, a request by Polly Doherty on behalf of Lindsay Scher and Jonathan Burgess for a variance from section 94 dash 81b2 of the zoning and land development regulations which requires a primary structure to have a five foot minimum site setback in the historic single family high density sf 14 c2 residential zoning district at 1409 george avenue the applicant is requesting a three foot two site setback thus granting a 1.8 feet setback site setback variance the motion is based upon the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. The Historic Preservation Board hereby makes funding of fact that each of the 10 criteria in Article 2nd, Section 94-38-D6 have been met for the variance. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, variance is granted. This ad valorem for alteration, addition, or new construction, because it says new construction in the application. My apologies, it's an ad valorem pre construction application for alterations and additions. Yes. Thank you. I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 22-79 in 1409 Georgia Avenue for alterations, additions, and ad valor ex tax exception in accordance with standards 9 and 10 as set forth in section 94-49 of the City Zoning and Land Development Regulations. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report which constitute competent substantial evidence. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, your project is approved. Thank you. Okay, our next case is 2280-721 Canuga Drive. Hello, good evening. My name is Richard Bromer. I'm here representing um, Sunfish Development. Uh, we're seeking approval for a addition and interior renovation of an existing house, one story um, CMU in uh, 721 Canuga Drive. Um, I have here in front of us, that's the current survey and how the house is located. It's a two lot basically property. Um, meaning all the setbacks and all the requirements. I have a better graph later if I can find the arrow to move to the next one. Uh, let's go this way. This is basically the proposed um, new site plan showing that we're meeting all the setbacks um, uh, and requirements of the city as far as FAR and lot coverage, etc. The next slide basically shows the colored areas, that's the existing house, and we're showing the proposed addition on this side, a small addition on this side. This is just an enclosed, I mean, not an enclosed, sorry, a porched area, just a roof um, addition. 
Um, the existing entry that we have on the house it remains as the entry of the house. And this is a current Porco share that we're going to enclose um, and add it to the AC space of the house. And on the back, we are adding a two car garage detached structure to the building. Um, this is the proposed floor plan. We're remaining, I mean, we're keeping all the existing, you know, one story walls of the house. All this is basically exactly the same what it is at the moment. We're just adding this area here, master. This is the enclosed loggia that we're adding and enclosing this area to create the dining room for the property. And of course, the detached garage in the back. Second floor addition. Um, again, meeting all the setbacks and FAR and square footage requirements on top of the existing. We did set it back to maintain that one to reduce that impact of a two-story um, house on the on the streetscape. Uh, roof plan for the house. On the bottom, we have the front elevation of the proposed structure. Again, the second floor recess back, setback additionally. The rear setback of the house, this is the area that is the roof porch. Uh, that is the portion of the addition on the first floor. And of course, the second floor is the addition of the house. Uh, the two side east and west elevations and just some sections and window and door schedule. These are the photos of the current structure of the that exists in the property. And like I said, this area is the one that we're enclosing and creating that dining room. All these elements, this bay window, we are keeping those. And this is the area we're just improving the structure of the um, um, covered area. It's just very, it's pretty much falling apart at the moment. So we're just changing the structure and creating a proper entry for the building in this area. There's the back of the house. As you can see, it's an existing structure that has in the past. It was built, I think, in the 1940s. And it seems like all these flat roofs were added addition, you know, after the original building was done. Um, poorly structured, you know, the quality is not very good and pretty much falling apart. There's also part of, I guess, that addition that was done afterwards, the original construction. Um, and these are some renderings showing the new proposed building that we want to do here in 721 Canoga. Uh, these are just some pictures of the uh, neighbors, um, other properties, uh, other designs in Canoga Drive, showing different architectural styles, uh, mission, um, Spanish, um, and this particular with the two-story, you know, that is a little bit away from the historic type of styles of architecture in the, the neighborhood. This is more of a ranch house. Um, that's basically it. No variants, nothing, just trying to make the house a little bit better. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any, any questions of the applicant? Nice job. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a beautiful house. Very nice job. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. Any, any further other questions? questions? Comments? Okay, thank you. Good evening, Ann Hamilton presenting case number 22-80 for additions and alterations at 721 Canuga Drive. Uh, this is a uh, large lot in the Flamingo Park Historic District. Uh, some of you may remember uh, a couple months ago, an uh, uh, application was made to demo the existing house um, and split the lot. Uh, the applicant has now come back um, with this uh, proposal for additions and alterations instead. Uh, here's a photo of the existing home on the site. Um, it is a contributing structure. Uh, it does not have any particular um, character-defining elements. Uh, here's a photo of the neighboring residences at 727 Canuga and 709 Canuga. 
The request is alterations to the existing home, including new windows and doors, addition of a master suite, loggia, and second story to the existing home, totaling approximately 2,469 square feet, as well as interior and site work. Here is the proposed site plan, the proposed ground floor plan, and the proposed second floor plan. And here are the proposed elevations. and the windows and doors that'll be used, and renderings. Uh, staff is of the belief that it meets uh, the applicable codes and Secretary, Secretary of the Interior standards and is recommending approval of the application as submitted. Thank you. Questions of staff? Uh, I have a question. Do, does the Historic Preservation Ordinance have a thres threshold of the amount of uh, proposed demolition to a structure that doesn't trigger it, it being reviewed for demolition? So we don't have a, a specific number um, that we review for something like that. Um, I will say this particular proposal is significant changes to, to the existing home. However, because the existing home doesn't have any character defining elements, um, we were comfortable with the level of change that was being proposed, especially since they've they've already received approval um, a number of years ago. The, the windows were changed out on a city commission appeal. Um, the, the, the home really has been altered to the point where if it was to be resurveyed today, um, staff is of the belief that it probably wouldn't merit contributing status. So this, um, no, no, go ahead. Um, so this application came before the requirement for existing elevations and new elevations side by side. Do we have that in our requirements? don't have that for additions, um, but we can certainly amend the application. We're still making sure all those uh, recommendations you made at the March meeting are implemented. Okay. Um, because it's difficult to understand. I see some of the pictures, but it's difficult to understand what is existing and how it, it, it gets impacted by the addition, right? If we don't have the before and after. Um, what is existing? Um, exterior wall finish is stucco or is siding? Uh, the existing is stucco. So they are um, wrapping the whole house, then existing and new with side, new siding then? I believe so, yes. And is that okay? Um, staff is, staff believes that it would be an acceptable change. Um, okay. Thank you. I think it's a philosophical issue. I mean, it essentially is a demolition and new construction. I mean, where can you point to the existing building remaining in this design? Yeah. Maybe there's three windows. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, I think the design of the new construction is great. Um, and when I was going through the, the package, I, I didn't realize, I thought there was a disconnect from my understanding of it. I thought maybe it was just a small addition to the, a non-contributing structure until I saw the street view. And I don't think the package has existing plans. Um, it doesn't. So... Now, I understand how it may be um, perceived as featureless, um, but for meeting the criteria of when it was designated, um, it probably meets at least one of those standards of being significant of, of the time of which it was built. Um, so I'm struggling with this project myself. I mean, it's completely changing the architectural style. 
as well. I mean, the materials, anything. I think I guess the, it's uh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I think the uh, stucco siding is throwing me off. Um, I think if this had a similar look to the existing, I wouldn't be so thrown off. I mean, I like the new design very much. Um, but as far as anything contributing from the original, there's nothing here. So maybe look at the design of this, maybe less stucco siding and maybe maybe smooth stucco might make this look a little different and a little more contributing to the original. Um, we can present, sorry, we can present an option that, you know, basically the first floor is a smooth stucco and if you look at the, the floor plan and the graphic that originally presented, you know, the first floor is on the front street is pretty much the same volumes as the original house and then the second floor is added to the back and all the additions are literally on the back of the house. So we can keep the front of the house, um, you know, with the same window styles that we already have, remove all that siding to create that, to maintain basically the look of the existing house and add this to the second floor. I mean, add just the second floor with the siding. Are you, are you, does the extent of work involve removing this floor slab? Are you bringing it higher? No, no, there's, no, we're maintaining the, the existing finished floor of the house. The property actually has, if you drive in Canuga, has a very steep drive and the house is quite high from the Crown of Road. Are there currently steps to enter the home? Um, give me one second. No. no, currently no. We have a steep driveway and you know the, the the turnaround basically is at the higher level. And the idea will be to work with engineering to try to maintain the, the driveway with a much you know, smoother slope and then adjust the porch with the steps going down. There might be one or two steps only. We have to work with engineering based on drainage and to maintain that minimum or maximum 10% slope for the driveway. Any further questions of staff for the applicant? Okay, thank you. Do you have any members of the public that wish to speak on this case? Okay, seeing none. This reminds me of a project a few years ago on Washington Road. I can't remember the case number, um, but it was a mid-century, a ranch brick house where the proposal came through to completely change the architectural style. We actually denied it. It was appealed to the city commission and it was approved there. And during the course of construction, I think every wall was demolished except for two. And I don't know how you would achieve this without the same thing occurring. So, I mean, I think we've all seen instances, and I wasn't on the board, on the commission doing that, but I've seen in my history of that kind of experience. Right now, I think that I, I just need, um, I'd like to see existing plans and um, a survey and the um, ex a demolition drawing showing the extent of the demolition. I definitely agree more information is needed. I do, um, do you like the architect's suggestion of 
treating the first floor with a, a stucco finish. Yeah, I think that in some way we need to differentiate the addition with the existing home. So I agree, we need more information. I would continue next month probably. Okay, anything else we'd like to see? Maybe if you can have photographs of the existing um, house in the in the in the revised set, that would be that would be helpful. Um, but you know, the existing floor plan, existing elevations, and then a demolition plan. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to continue? I move the history preservation board. Um, to continue case 22-80721 Canuga Drive to next uh, month in September. To the second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, your case is continued. And um, please check with staff if you need any further clarification on, on what the board would like to see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case is 22-81-622 Westwood Road. Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Bullock, architect of record for this project. Um, what what this is is a uh, it's a empty lot basically in a recent it's a fairly recently designated um, district, and um, our client is actually here. Uh, it's a it's going to be a home for their family basically. They're both Florida natives and they intend to stay here recently. Uh, recently married actually, and um, they're very excited to be presenting this project to you guys today. Um, let me just set up the slides here. So the address is uh, 622 Westwood Road. Um, here's just kind of an overview looking north. You can kind of see the, uh, the backdrop of the city and uh, downtown beyond. Um, this is our site. Uh, I, I believe this, uh, there was a uh, home previously on the lot that was completely de uh, demolished. Um, so as I came in, entered into the project, we basically had a clean lot to, to work from. Um, here's a sort of an overview. This is how the lot looks today. It's it's fairly, you know, it's it's kind of gone fallow. But um, we've got some pictures of the the neighboring buildings, the street context. Um, this is a modern home that's just to the west of us that, that has been built. Um, I think this kind of was uh, constructed or permitted before the historic district uh, was designated, and so there's some modern elements in there that are obviously uh, clearly departing from what the rest of the neighborhood is. Um, there's some other historic, this is the neighbor to the east, and then the next one after that. So you can see it's, um, you know, it's, it's obviously a different uh, context here. This is across the street. This is the home on the corner that's been recently renovated. Um, so the styling that we're looking at, I just wanted to give you a little uh, taste of some of the materials we chose. This is kind of a... Um, uh, heading towards a Spanish revival, um, but it's a sort of a modern take on it. So we've simplified the architecture quite a bit, but um, kind of uh, uh, an homage to the past, but not really going completely modern. Um, kind of a color palette. Um, these are some early sketches. This, uh, the lot here is outlined by that red line. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's a uh, it's a little bit wider lot than what you typically see in this area. This is just a little breakdown of um, the zoning district requirements. Um, our lot size is t uh, just around 10,000 square feet. Uh, we've complying with all of our requirements. Uh, as you can see here, I've got like our front setbacks and everything. So all setbacks, all coverage ratios, everything, we've, we've met all of them. Um, here's our site plan. So 
the way that the site kind of works out is that we've uh, kind of maintained the existing access to the site, which is here. We've uh, increased the width of it just, just slightly and created a side entrance garage with a, a small motor court. Um, there's a detached guest house in the back, which is actually where the uh, mother-in-law is going to be living. So it's a true uh, uh, in-law quarters. Um, here's a first floor plan layout. Uh, as you can see, a two-car garage. Um, it's 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 fairly modest. I mean, we did the we we've kind of gone to the uh, max as far as our footages were allowed because um, obviously he, they plan on having a large family and and they need some room to grow. And um, so, but we're still, like I said, within compliance of all of our footages and everything. Second floor, um, roof plan, front elevations. Here you can kind of get a sense of the styling of the home. Um, it features these uh, swooping things. There's some uh, hints of sort of uh, Santa Barbara architecture. Um, uh, one of the comments that we got from staff was that we might want to think about adding some muntins to the windows. Um, we're happy to do that if, if that's what's necessary. Um, side and rear elevations. Uh, one of the elements here is an espalier. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we've created this espalier across the front. Um, here's the building within the context of the street. Here's some color renderings of what we expect it to look like. And that's basically it. So I, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions of the applicant. So um, you know that there are three conditions of approval by staff. Mm -hmm. do, do you agree with them? Do you Did you look at them? Yeah, we, we, I glanced at them. I didn't see anything that was uh, objectionary. Um, if we could maybe just rehash them real quickly, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, everything looked, looked good. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we'll go we, um, through them with their presentation sure. and we'll come back. Okay. Thank Any you. Any other questions? We're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Ann Hamilton presenting case number 22-81 for new construction at 622 Westwood Road. This is a large lot in the Sunshine Park Historic District located on the south side of Westwood Road. Uh, the existing site is currently vacant uh, and there is a home under construction at 630 Westwood Road to the west that was uh, completed permitting before the establishment of Sunshine Park for, uh, Historic District, uh, and then a smaller home at 616 Westwood Road to the east. The request is for proposed new construction of a two-story Mediterranean-inspired style single-family home of approximately 2,972 square feet, an accessory structure of approximately 715 square feet. Previously, there was a home that was built in 1925 on the lot. It was demolished in 2018 before the establishment of Sunshine Park as a historic district. Here's the proposed site plan, the proposed roof plan, first floor plan, second floor plan, the front elevation, the side elevations, and the rear elevation, and the proposed windows and doors. Uh, as you can see in the streetscape, it does uh, meet the size of the home next door at 630 Westwood in terms of massing, and here are the renderings. Uh, staff believes that it meets the review criteria for new construction, um, the Secretary of the Interior Standards 9 and 10, and the Historic Preservation Ordinance, uh, and are recommending approval with the condition uh, with these conditions, uh, that all windows have a multiple light grid pattern with external dimensional muttons. Um, we would like to see it revised to bronze or white frames. Um, it appears in, in the proposal that it's more of a blue color for the frames and clear glass with low E possible on sides and rear. 
um, and then some changes to the um, the windows as proposed. Uh, the three windows above the main entry uh, shall be revised to four windows. Um, the three windows above the front entry of the accessory structure shall also be re revised to two pairs of windows. Two windows shall also be added to the front of the accessory structure on either side of the entry, and a window shall be added to the front of the garage. Um, the, the structure shall be shifted south to allow for a 25-foot front setback as required by the SF14-C2 zoning regulations. And the front-facing gable on the second story of the main house shall be revised to a hip roof to better reflect the roof lines of existing homes in Sunshine Park. Thank you. Questions of staff? Can you walk us through these uh, elevation changes and reasons for yes. requesting this, please? So generally on the front elevation, um, we'd like to see this particular section improved. Um, these windows here, um, we'd prefer to see um, split into four windows rather than three above the, the main entrance. Uh, we'd like to see these windows split into two pairs and then windows added on either side of this front entrance and another window added to the front of the garage. Um, those are the main uh, changes except for uh, obviously the, the adding of grids uh, to all windows. Thank you. And we did receive um, a number of public comments um, for this, if you'd like me to read them now. Yes, please. The first comment, as a former honor, homeowner on Westwood Road, we are very happy to see this vacant lot finally be developed with a home carefully designed to fit with the Spanish and historic style of the neighborhood. This is from Aaron Odilon Moreno. Uh, the next uh, comment, I live at 604 Upland Road and I am vehemently opposed to the construction of a 4,177 square foot house at 622 Westwood Road. A house that size is not in line with the scale of the neighborhood homes. This is from Christine Glickman. Hopefully this tasteful design will be approved for addition to our neighborhood. It's refreshing to have a historically thoughtful new construction in our neighborhood. This house stands as a beacon of hope in comparison to several of the new construction designs that have been forced on our lovely neighborhood by a few architecturally inept spec developers. Neither form nor function could explain a few of the modern house disasters recently approved. I welcome this measured and elegant Spanish design with open arms, respectfully. By Christian Horvé. My husband and I are lifelong residents 60 plus years of WPB. I grew up in what is now referred to as SoSo, and my husband grew up in Prospect Park. In light of all the recent sweeping changes in our neighborhoods, we are very aware of new construction and the subsequent styles replacing the original homes. Growing up, we would frequent friends who lived in Sunshine Park area, and so these neighborhoods carry a lot of nostalgia. We were so pleased when we saw a rendering of the proposed new home on 622 Westwood Road because it beautifully displays the Spanish style that blends so well with the old. Additionally, the large lot size allows for this home to have ample space for greenery, another nice blend for the neighborhood. This is from Adela S. Anthony. That actually um, brought up a question so the size, scale, and mass regulations that were adopted, they're specific to each historic district. Are there any for for this one currently? Um, for Sunshine Park? Yes. Yes. Uh, as a part of its approval um, as a historic district, they did adopt the SF14C2 regulations, uh, okay. similar to what has been existing in Flamingo Park. Okay. Um, and the, this project abides by those? Yes. Besides the front 25-foot setback, which will, that, 
That's why we included the condition of shifting it back. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of staff? Okay, thank you. Do you have any further public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll go into executive staff. Oh, actually, if you want to make a rebuttal on any of those comments that were um, uh, read. Yeah, so all the comments were uh, well received. Um, the one uh, comment about the size, square footage, our total area under AC is 30, sorry, 3687, so for the record. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll enter into executive session. Uh, I don't have any issues. It's a very nice house. I don't know if I've ever seen um, a trellis of a, like espaliered vines as such a prominent feature of the design that's been presented to us. I mean, normally we don't review landscape, so that was the only thing that came up to me, you know. What would this building look like if at some point in the future those aren't maintained or if they're removed by a future owner? It does seem to be a lot of stucco on this house. So I'm, I'm looking at the fenestration and just wondering if some of them could be bigger. It seems to be like a really big amount of stucco right in the middle of the house. So I don't know if things can come down a little bit, which may make some of the neighbors happy with scale. Um, and then th that's a significant move from the street five feet back. Is that going to alter your design in any way? Sure. Yeah, what we what we did, it was kind of difficult for us to actually gauge the exact distance of every property along the whole entire street without actually sending out a survey or, and entering everyone's property. So what we did is we walked down to the sidewalk with a laser and we took the average of the street and that came out, that's how we came out to the, where we came with. So that's what we went with. But, I, you know, she did a little research here and said that really we should be back a little bit further. So um, I, I think we can, we can make it work with 25 feet. It's not a problem for the, for the plan. Gabe, do you have any thoughts on the the trellis, the use of the trellis? And no, 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 okay. no objection. <laughs> no, it looks nice. I just my hypothetical situation. Well, if the trellises weren't there, you know, if that wasn't part of the design, I, I, you know, I think that there would be other vegetation there, other landscaping that would serve the purpose of reducing the, um, um, That's you know, true. the mass of the structure there. Um, if I can comment, That's okay. Um, that is also the reason uh, that we proposed the condition of adding a window on the garage, just in the interest of um, it breaking up the, the trellis space a little bit. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Well, any further discussion or would someone like to make a motion? I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 22-81 for new construction in accordance with the standard of rehabilitation and the compatibility standards as set forth in the Historic Preservation Ordinance, Ordinance number 3554-02. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted in the staff report, which constitutes competent substantial evidence. In addition, the approval of this request is made Conditional upon the following restrictions, stipulations, and or safeguards that I move are necessary to ensure compliance with the purpose intent of the Historic Preservation Ordinance and the Historic Preservation Element of the Comprehensive Plan of the City of West Palm Beach. Um, 
specifically standards uh, 9 and 10. Uh, compatibility standards, uh, okay, these conditions include the following. Let's see, I'm sorry, I lost that. One second, please, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All windows shall have a, uh, a multi-light grid pattern with external dimensional muttons, bronze or white frames, and clear glass. Low E coating is permissible on sides and rear only. The uh, three windows uh, above the main entry shall be revised to four windows. The three windows above the front entry of the accessory structure shall be revised to two pairs of windows. Two windows shall also be added to the front of the accessory structure on either side of the entry. A window shall be added to the front of the garage. The structure shall be shifted south to allow for a 25-foot setback as required by the SF14-C2 zoning regulations. The front facing gable on the second story of the main house shall be revised to a hip roof to better reflect the roof lines of existing homes in Sunshine Park. To the second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay, the motion carries your project is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case is 22-82, 415 58th Street. Hi, I'm Aaron Menatoff, and thank you for taking the time to listen to this case. I'm going to apologize in advance. It's going to be pretty anticlimactic uh, after seeing all these fabulous projects, but it is what it is. Um, I'm going to just try to find my uh, PowerPoint on here for a second. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to request some, like an exemption, I guess I would call it, um, based on some circumstances that I'd like to explain to everyone. So we recently purchased two homes in Northwood Harbor, and we did that so we could be in close proximity to my mother-in-law, who's 85 years old. Um, she's relying on us a lot. Uh, her partner of 30 years uh, had a stroke and had to go into assisted living, so she's even more dependent on us. So we moved from our farm out in the western communities where she, they both lived on the property with us to be closer to our manufacturing plant in Rivera Beach. So now we're four minutes from there, we're four minutes from her, and it works out really well. So we thought we did this like less than a year ago, um, and we thought we were getting kind of headed, ahead of the game in terms of getting a hurricane company to come out and put um, hurricane protection on the homes. And what we asked the hurricane protection company was we need something that's super fast, that we're going to be able to put up um, without you know, hiring other people or having to put a lot of effort into it. And the reason why is that our company um, happens to be one of the largest um, disaster relief food service providers for FPNL and for Red Cross. And what that means is that when the hurricanes are coming, we're involved in a lot of logistics and we're hands on and our entire team is out there as the hurricane's coming and everybody else is protecting their homes. We're out there organizing uh, cooks tents, uh, tents, dining tents for the FPNL, Texas PNL, um, Georgia PNL workers. Uh, we're getting, we're organizing bathrooms for them. We're getting transportation, we're getting hotels, we're getting garbage and waste removal, uh, diesel, propane, uh, all air conditioning for them, like everything that needs to get done. And then we have to, um, within 12 hours of the hurricane passing, we have to, we have to feed uh, people all over the state of Florida. And this all happens in a moment's notice. And us included, with our staff, hundreds of people are sleeping literally in, on tent, tent floors in in order to get this done. So it's a monumental effort. And um, because of that, um, we can't take the time to be able to, you know, attend to something that um, an 85 year old person would have to be able to do for herself in her own home. Um, and that we would be have to do because we would ha be neglecting everything else that we have to do uh, to get these feeding sites ready. And just so you know, kind of the scale of what we do, we literally feed hundreds of thousands of people all over the state of Florida, both um, just, you know, people through the Red Cross and then also all these power workers that are driving in and sleeping in their trucks and parking lots we're setting up so they can eat. Um, so, you know, I, I hope that's compelling enough to allow us to be able to have, um, 
you know, easy hurricane uh, protection to protect our homes because we're not going to be there to be able to do that for us or for our, our family, which it's, it's my wife, myself, and my mother-in-law, and there's nobody, there's no one else around. So um, I wanted to show you, um, that's us. If you wanted to look up there, that's me with the Michigan hat. And, you know, we're literally out there for the first three days on with zero sleep, making sure all this cycle can go and everybody can eat so the power can get back on and people can get their air conditioning and people can get fed and get, have, uh, you know, a quality of life again. So we literally serve hundreds and hundreds of thousands of meals during these hurricanes. So with that being said, um, we have, I can show you my... Um, mother-in-law's property and we wanted to do um accordion shutters because they're easy if she if she needs to close them by herself that she can do that by herself and that there's um in, in the front four windows we decided to do uh bahama ones we weren't aware of like any kind of regulations they've already been manufactured and produced and they're ready when to install and then that's when this uh we really we got the notice from the permit that it's not allowed, um, and the, we decided to do the Bahama ones because we thought it, you know, fit in a little bit better than doing the ones that just shut, like the accordion ones, just on those front, the front ones right there. And then this is just another view of the house, the different windows. Um, so, and then this ties into kind of the next, uh, the next property. So, if you want me to break. Uh, to, I guess, field questions on that, I'm happy to do so, or I can go right into the next property. Do you have any kind of plan that shows um, what shutters are going where, or are they all the same? Um, they're all the accordion shutters around the entire house, and then in the front, um, the, the, the front four windows that you could, that are visible under that under the porch and then over to the side, kind of behind that tree on the right, uh, there's four windows that would be those, I think it's Bahama, Bahama or Bermuda, something like that, close and go down. So they're easy for her to be able to put down and, and pin, pin together. So you're going to have one of those under the porch? Under the porch. Okay. Do you, does anybody else have a question? Um, when you refer to the accordion, you're referring to uh, the horizontal ones or the roll down? Uh, horizontal. And the horizontal ones would be on the side of the house, like on the windows that you see here. All of these um, elements have been purchased. Yeah, they've all been, they've had to all be custom manufactured. And, you know, we would have made other different choices if. Um, what are the, what's the color and the. Um, these are the. Look of the shut Bahama shutters. Um, they're metal, they're powder coated, black, white. So that's a good question. I do have it. Do you know. If um, the packet that I sent is available by any chance, it, the packet that I sent in is uh, has all that information in it. So hopefully we can look it up. I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see the color. From memory, I would, I'm would i going to say white, but it's information I can look up. And it, it, it is available in the packet. Do 
think brown or is that the other property? Okay, I think that's fif the 55, 10. Okay, thank you for looking that up. I appreciate it. Thanks. So it's, so it's white, your, I'm sorry. So the Bahama shutters are white or are the accordions? The, uh, everything's white. Everything. Okay. So is your bottom line here is that you're objecting to the, um, the removable panels? Is that the totality of your objections? Yes. Okay. For, for the reason that nobody would be around to do it. Okay. I, I think the Bahama shutters underneath your covered porch may turn your porch in kind of inoperable when they're not down. Yeah. Like, I think, I don't want to think for you, but it that, that one I'm having kind of, Quite honestly, I, I don't really care about the Bahama shutters on the other two windows, the, the ones facing the street. I know that's probably not that. Um, it, it's removable. I think they're 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 kind of harmless, but I, I don't think the ones under the porch make sense. Um, for one, that would be the area that would probably be like perhaps hidden if you did the accordion. Um, and I think that when you have these Bahama shutters, you're not, your mother or in-law is not going to be able to use that lovely porch because the Bahama shutters will be there, open. Makes sense? Yeah, it, it definitely makes sense. I mean, she's not very mobile. Uh, she's not going to really be out, out and about. To your point, I think it also, like, aesthetically... You know, what is, like, the presence on the street? Yeah, and functionally, they also provide shade, but you don't really need the shade because it's under the porch. That, that one seems a little awkward to me. Would you like to present on the, on the other property as well? Sure. So the next one is... I could show it from different angles. So these are the um, the shutters that came with it when we purchased the property. And I, the, the, there's an area that that's a courtyard that's not visible from the street that we needed something to to you know the same function that would be quick that we could just put down, put a pin in, and walk away. Um, the courtyard you can kind of see there; it's covered. Um, can't really see in it. The neighbors can't see in it. Um, you can kind of see, I picked the one spot that you can see one of the windows if you're looking directly in the front. This is from the top. You can see where that umbrella is. That's kind of the courtyard where there's a several windows that are not protected at all. Um, this is kind of showing a, a little drawing of it. There's one, two, three, four windows that are not protected. Um, and here's a picture of it. And they, again, we had all, they're all fabricated and ready to go. And it's the, you know, being able to do it quickly is what we wanted to do. So um, I guess it's, that's really all that there is. It's just quick. It's already been, you know, purchased and fabricated. We're in hurricane season, you know, it could happen at any minute and work a little, you know, at your mercy for this. Can you go back to the photograph of the courtyard where you see the windows? Sure. I think from like maybe a drone or a bird's perspective. Yes. Um, okay, so same question. Uh, what are the color of these Bahama shutters? These are brown. And so right now I'm seeing the four shut the four windows that will have shutters. 
Yes. Um, so, first of all, I, I think it's commendable what you do for um, first responders during hurricane. Um, and Thank you. Uh, absolute respect in that regard. But I'm looking at both applications, notwithstanding that. Um, this one I, I kind of don't really have a problem with because I would base it on it not being very visible from the right-of-way, internal to the courtyard. But again, I, I question the thought process of the two, the two, the windows in the corner won't function as Bahama shutters. One will have to permanently be shut if I'm understanding how Bahama shutters work. So where the I, I don't it's understand. a um, it's a it's a valid point and I pointed the same thing out but that's actually it's a bathroom it's a shower so it's all frosted um, so it's just gonna stay shut with the uh, the bl like the blinder parts open so light can get in but the windows never open and there's no real visibility so that one would stay shut and then the other one would be able to open and close hmm. And again, these are purchased. They're purchased and fabricated and, and ready to install. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So, were you under, unaware? Since I understand that you're um, new purchasers of in, in in a historic district, so were you unaware that uh, there's design review within our historic districts? Yeah, we didn't. We had. Um, mistakenly thought that your house has to be like a de historic designated house in order to have to meet certain rules but we definitely we get uh, we get permits for everything like we had a fence put in we had any work that we had done prior to moving in we got permits for everything and sent it through so our you know i guess we we rely on professionals right to be able to make judgments on our behalf and so we hired a, a company to come in and do this for us and we made the I guess the wrong assumption that if they're going to we're paying them to pull the permits that they should know these types of rules and that these things may happen you know we're lay people where I, I can tell you anything about the food service industry but nothing about construction so it's you know we try to do things by the rule by hiring a licensed insured uh, company having making sure they're pulling permits um, we did that for every part of the you know the minor renovations that we have done so when you purchased your property there wasn't a covenant or any documentation to it, um, explain that this is a con I'm assuming a contributing property within a historic district yeah there's it nothing that said that okay because I believe I think that's required as part of the title paperwork is that I think that's true it's not really I'll acknowledge it's buried amongst okay. lots of information. Okay. But it is in there because it is recorded. So if you pull the title. We'll okay. 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 All right. Well, and, and am, I, am I correct in remembering that you actually participated in one of our meetings as a member of the public? In yeah. Sometime this, I think sometime this year. Yes. I can't remember what it was for, but I remember your face. Yeah. It was our, our neighbor to the left put in a review and where they wanted to do, you know, renovations. And so... We actually finally spoke, and we've uh, we're all for it. And they explained the whole thing. It's the one that I don't go into it again. But there's like 15 people living in the house, and we thought they were going to build the another addition to pack, pack more people in. But the husband's sick, and he's a contractor, so he can't get to the work yet. And they put in the you know the notices to have the people out in two months. So okay. we worked it out. Yeah, I'm glad that's resolved. Thanks. Um, do you have any further questions? Of the applicant. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good evening, Anne Hamilton presenting case number 22-82 for alterations uh, shutters for 415 58th Street. I'll just start with the, uh, the, the first house that was presented and then um, I can either present the second house after this or uh, take questions first. 
Um, here's the location of the house. It is located on 58th Street near North Flagler Drive. Um, and a photo of the existing house. The request is for alterations including shutters on this home. Um, it's uh, shutters for all windows. Uh, 24 windows or 24 shutters in a mixture of accordion removable panel and Bahama styles. There's some um, on the plans. It does show a couple of uh, removable panel shutters that that were included in this um, this list. Uh, I don't know if the applicant would like to speak to that. Um, but it is a mixture of accordion shutters on sides and rear, and then the mainly Bahama shutters on the front. Um, staff believes that it does not meet uh, the, Secretary of the, Secretary of the Secretary of the Interior standards or the applicable codes, um, but staff is mindful of the, uh, the situation, including an elderly homeowner, and uh, is recommending approval with the conditions that the three front shutters that are currently proposed to be Bahamas shutters shall be revised to removable panels for this particular property. Um, so I can take questions now, or I can uh, also present the other home. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could they keep the Baham Bahamas shutters in the front and just not install them until they need to use them, since they already made them? Is that because that seems to be the question for the approval? Is just those the front? So, so typically with Bahamas shutters, they they're permanently installed. Um, yeah, I know how they're uh, installed. Yeah. But you can also do some bracket work and then put them up when they are needed as well. I mean, I can chime in on that. I think that would be very similar to a removable panel, so we would right. support it. However, I, not to speak for the applicant, but I think that's their concern. That would be even right. more onerous to install a Bahama shutter than a removable panel, which can be very lightweight. Yeah. Thank you. And you pointed out that there are some removable panels being installed on other windows on uh, this property. So that is what's indicated on the uh, on the site plan that was submitted. Uh, number number three and number sixteen are listed as clear panels. And and hypothetically, this board and and you as planners don't have any purview on whether people take their removable panels down. So, like, in theory, do, no. they could be left up all the time. I think there is a code enforcement and life safety issue if someone's living in it. I don't know the exact provision um, so that there is egress. Okay. But that would be outside of your purview. Right. Okay. Any further questions of staff? Do we want to um, make a motion on this? property before we move on or do you all want to hear on the next okay the, the condition is just that they you install the Bahamas shutters but that they be removed the Bahamas shutters how does staff feel that I mean I feel like that's you can't enforce that, right? I mean, so if you approve a Bahama shutter, they could just install them and leave them up, right? There would be no way for you to enforce that they would not be up all the time, correct? Uh, it, would, it would be very difficult to enforce something like that, yeah. I think that's my only concern with that condition. I think I, I like that you're trying to work with them and, and come up with a creative solution. Uh, this we ha we all have a site plan on our screen, and is it oriented so that uh, the bottom is the street view? Yes. So I believe in this, so in this Bahamas, situation, based on where the Bahama shutters are, um, one, two, four, one, two, four, and five are all the street facing windows. I can. And show what's going on with number three? So number three is That's the one the clear that says it's a clear panel. I don't I don't know if the applicant wants to. So that's the door. It's a, yeah, I think it's a small window based on the picture. Is to a, where's the door? So I, I believe the way that it's um, it's drawn, the, the door would be uh, next to two. It's just not um, drawn accurately. <coughs> I take on it. B 
but four and five are definitely two Bahama shutters that they want that are not under that colonnade. Correct, yes. I believe four and five would be the, the two small windows um, here. Oh, and, and another one here, so blocked by the tree. So staff is okay with the door being an accordion? Um, is that what it says? Isn't that what it, three? Oh no, it's the clear, sorry. Yeah, I don't, I no, don't wait, it's not on there. Yeah, I don't believe so the there's no protection for the door? Is it an impact door? <laughs> I think number two is the door. It is, well, there's two windows there. That's what I'm... I don't, I don't okay, think the so diagram yeah, two is, two is, is representative the yeah. of the house. I think it's a, little, it's a little bit off. This is the one that the hurricane company did. Um, but like where two is, I think, is actually the door, and there, one is the two, is, has two windows. The three is a very tiny window. So there's a door in between the two and the three up there. And the door, I believe, is removable panels. That's the accordion shutter. Is it looks like if two is the door, then it's an accordion shutter. I think it's labeled in. It's not labeled properly. But if we can go, can we go by the picture? So. There's, yeah, there's one, number one is the, and number two, I think, are the, those two combined, the two that are next to each other on the front porch. And then I don't think that they have the door listed. So I think potentially. I'm thinking it's one giant Bahama shutter over those two, the paired windows, and then the door is accordion. Is that even make? I, th I think you're right. Um, I, I can't get around supporting the Bahama shutter under the cover terrace just in terms of a logistic not nothing to do with the historic it just um and if I may make a point uh based on based on the uh the dimensions that are in your packet number two is a a, a door um it's okay an accordion. okay Sir, just a quick question. What was the date that you ordered these, this material? Um, I think April. April, okay. Yeah, I have in the presentation, I can bring it back up, but I have the two invoices from it with the dates on them. Okay. Is that something that you'd like to see? I, I don't, I don't wanna, I wanna see it, but you know, um, I don't know if it's appropriate to say, you know, discuss this here, but you ordered them in April, and now we're here at the end of August in hurricane season, and you had an opportunity to come before us before then with plenty of time to be ready for hurricane season. You, but with all due respect, I, we, didn't, we weren't aware that the, this whole process was in place. We, you know, what we do is we hire a contractor to give us the suggestions based on what we want, and then they submitted the permit. So they, they didn't understand that this had to happen and us as lay people certainly wouldn't understand for never of living in, in a historic district before. So it's just, you know, not that ignorance is an is a excuse for it, but how would we, else would we ever know? Like we thought we were being proactive. Let's hire a contractor. Let's get ahead of hurricane season so they can get it all installed by hurricane season. Then the permit came back and they called, the company called us and said, this is, was denied because of the historic, you're in a historic district. So it's, I mean, you only know what you know. Well, I'm not going to debate this with you, but, um, you know, thank you. You're welcome. The two windows facing the street that are not under the colonnade, does that have a architectural shelf, like a rock kind of sill? And if so, will that conflict with the installation of the shutter, the Bahama shutter? Does that protrude? Is it just my eyes? Those four it, uh, windows. 
It does protrude. And, you know, I'm the, I assume that the contractor, the company that measured it and had them all fabricated took all that into account. Have you reviewed uh, staff's condition that they'd like to see those front three shutters be removable panels instead of the Bahama shutters? Yes, and that's you know, and that's essentially the the reason why I'm here is to describe the situation and just hoping that you can be compassionate to those needs, like the needs of what we're actually what we're trying to do, um, you know, for the general community and the general good. Can come ahead of, you know, how this might look, and that, um, you know, we made every effort on our part as lay people to make the right decisions. I mean, we 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 uh, hired a, a licensed contractor that's been in business for years. We, you know, use their recommendation. You know, well, it's and, I like, and I think staff is understanding of that. And if, if you read the report, they actually mention your disaster relief work. And, and typically, accordion shutters wouldn't be allowed at all. So what they're proposing is to say, look, we'll, we'll allow that even though it's not typically something that's ever approved in historic districts. But our compromises that we're offering for you to please do this, you know, in exchange. And so that's what I'm asking. Is that something do you, do you think that? we could work towards a compromise and just address those three windows on the front, understanding everything that we've discussed. Yeah, I mean, 100%, it's, uh, we are, we're appreciative of that, 100% appreciative of that. So, you know, whatever you ultimately decide, I just wanted to have my voice heard in terms of, you know, our whole thought process. There was nothing, we weren't trying to get around doing something. We would have done exactly what we were supposed to if we had known, right? Like. You know, that's why we go to professionals for things, right? We go to doctors, we don't diagnose ourselves. So we go to contractors because I, we're not gonna build a house. Like, we did everything right, and some, and it came back to, as a, you know, a lesson learned. So we'll do whatever, whatever you tell us to do. Okay, thank oh, you. And we appreciate the, the um, I guess the exemption on those, those. I mean, it's a, a lot of money invested in it up until this point, and, it's uh, so we appreciate that helping us in that regard. Thanks. Well, thank you, thank you. And and so I'll put it. I, do we have any further question? I'm assuming there's no public comment. There's no one else here. <laughs> um, we, so I, I'll put it to the board. Um, we, um, we, do you have any we, questions? We, I'm sorry. You know, we live in a place where you know people routinely leave for the season, and um, they hire someone to come and and do particular kind of work like closing shutters or removing materials from, from balconies and so forth. So why use the argument of saying that I can't do this because, you know, um, my, my 84-year-old mother-in-law can't close these when you could very simply hire a handyman that would come and do this for you in, in all of five minutes, you know, for 25 bucks. Um, you know, I'm just not, I'm, I'm sorry to be a curmudgeon here, but I'm just not buying this. I mean, I, I, and I understand your point under normal circumstances. When the hurricanes are coming, we lit our normal staff, they're protecting their homes too. And some of them don't want to go and do this kind of work. So we literally have to find by posting on Facebook and by, you know, going through different networks, we have to find l literally a couple hundred people that are willing to come out and work in these conditions. So like, I know about finding people and about how hard it is to do it, especially during that time. And I think what we're all going through right now in terms of the environment with contractors, you can't even get a call back to get a to get an electrician or to get, you know, anything done. So it's I don't agree that it's that easy. I'm I'm sorry. And to to insinuate that I'm doing something that's underhanded here, I do many things for the community. And I can we can I can get into that conversation as well. I'm going to propose we go into executive session. Right. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So I think we've got a, a couple compromises that are discussed. There's um, staff's condition, which is one option for conversion of the, the three shutters to removable panels. James, you also voiced that you would be comfortable with the windows not under the porch. Uh, to
to have the Bahama shutters. And so I guess it would just be that one window that would perhaps have a removable panel. Is, is that what you would suggest? You could even, they spent the money on that particular window for a Bahama shutter. That particular window just cannot be permanent. So I don't know how you, you know, can regulate that. Um, I, so I don't mind think, the Bahama shutters on the two yeah. windows that are not under the, the porch. You know, as you had indicated um, earlier, the, um, the compromise and the empathy with the gentleman's situation was handled by, by staff by allowing accordion shutters. Right. So it just seems that you know, the applicant needs to, you know, bend a little too. Um, you know, uh, you know, perhaps um, he could, you know, he'd have to um, eat the money on, 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 on one or two of the shutters and get different things uh, made and have something temporary, uh, temporarily be made uh, when, uh, until the, uh, the new stuff could be, um, could be manufactured. Um, I don't know. This is not the first situation that we've had like this. It's very difficult, and I just feel badly from you know my colleagues here that we're we're placed you know at the position of of trying to be understanding and empathetic and so forth, and um, there was no uh, repercussion repercussity on the on the other side. Well, I'm. I'm not sure about that, but I, I just, I think staff has probably put a lot of thought into this and, you know, I always defer to them pretty much always. And um, I feel very strongly that maintaining the, the primary facade, you know, the street facing elevation is really important. So I personally uh, would be in favor of approval with staff's condition. Okay. I don't know how everybody else feels, but yeah. So um, unless there's any further conversation, um, discussion, would someone like to make a motion? Uh, I think we still have to talk. We still haven't had the uh, presentation on the next one. Okay. So uh, just a motion for, for this property at 415 58th Street. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to move that the Historic Preservation Board um, approve application number 22-82 for shutters in accordance with standards um, nine and ten, I believe, as set forth in section 94-9 of the city zoning and land development regulations. This motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted in, in the staff report, which constitute competent and substantial evidence. In addition, the approval of this request is made conditional upon the following restrictions, stipulations, and our safeguards that I move are necessary to ensure compliance with the purpose and intent of the Historic Preservation Ordinance, the Historic Preservation Element of the Comprehensive Plan of the City of West Palm Beach, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, specifically Standards 9 and 10, which states the criteria set forth in Section 94-49 of the City Zoning and Land Development Regulations, specifically criteria list um, which state uh, the condition include the following, that the um, front facing, um, I need the specifics and I don't have it in front of me, sorry. That the front three shutters, thank you, uh, that are currently proposed to be Bahama shutters shall be revised to removable panels. Do we have a second? Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm in favor. No. Okay, so that was all aye. Okay. Okay. Um, that, that case is approved. Thank you for compromising with us. We appreciate that. Thank you for bending for us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so we'll go on to the next case, um, 5510 Spruce. Good evening, Ann Hamilton presenting case number 22-83 for alterations including shutters at 5510 Spruce Avenue. Uh, here's a location aerial of the subject property. It's located on the corner of Spruce Avenue and 55th Street. A photo of the site. The request is for alterations including shutters um, on this particular courtyard um, as seen here. Um, four permanent Bahamas style shutters are to be installed in the windows on this, in this interior courtyard. Currently the home has a number of existing clamshell awnings on the existing windows, um, which would not be approved today as an architecturally appropriate choice. Um, here's the site plan of the four windows that would be receiving the Bahamas shutters. Uh, staff believes that this does not meet the Secretary of Interior Standards 9 and 10 or the applicable codes and are recommending denial of the application as submitted. Thank you. Sorry, questions of staff. I, my, my question is, um, so this request is not to do all the windows, it's just for the four on the interior courtyard? No, just, just for the four interior courtyard windows. These are the ones that are not visible from the street and they're not part of the front of the house, correct? So, the view here is from the street. Um, from the street you can see the interior courtyard it is blocked by a, a good deal of vegetation but um to, to say that it's not entirely visible from the street uh it, it's up to your interpretation and this picture that's up is the side of the side street um this picture is taken i believe on spruce oh, okay Um, if you have a good question, thank you. Any further questions of staff? Do you have any questions of the applicant? Okay, thank you. Any public comment? No public comment. So we'll go into executive session. Now I feel like this is like the opposite of what I just said with the previous case. I mean, yes and no. I mean, generally I defer to, to staff's recommendation, but then the other part of my comment with the other property is I, you know, I'm concerned about, you know, how it affects, you know, the street. And this really isn't visible. And so it's, I don't know, it's, it makes it a little bit more complicated in terms of, you know, whether it should be denied or approved. I mean, by the standards, yes, it should be denied, but It's hard to separate this from the previous case. Yeah. I, these are Bahama shutters. I, I, I believe that Bahama shutters would be less, not that that's up for discussion, but um, accordion shutters, if they were proposed, I would be a hard no on because I think that the entablature that maintains the um, shutter becomes kind of an architectural element and a Bahama shutter it 
in my opinion, is less impactful to a facade because it exudes a certain kind of temporary nature that can be removable. Um, aside from the nonsensical corner condition, uh, I generally am supportive of this application as proposed. Well, and I think to your point, it, it's already an existing condition on some of the windows. They already have those shutters. And actually, I can agree with you. And um, uh, as Ms. Hamilton said, um, you kind of have to strain a little bit to, to be able to see them. So I think that we, we, we can certainly offer the applicant um, a break on this. I agree. Great. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 22, I'm sorry, 22-83 for shutters in accordance with standards uh, 9 and 10 as set forth in section 94-9 of the city zoning and land development regulations. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitute competent and substantial evidence. Do a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, your case is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for your important work. Um, with that, can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Do a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, staff.